To be honest, I first didn't quite get the BMW 6 Series GT, but then I was sitting in the rear of one once and said, oh, that's very interesting, let's take a deeper look in exterior, interior and the driving experience and how does it sit between the 5 Series and the 7 Series. Let's find out together in Full HD, Full Screen and Full Length. Let's go! In the front we can see a big BMW double kidney also with this let's say step silhouette if you look at it from this perspective also adaptive this inside part only opens when the airflow is needed but meanwhile we know with the 7 series and the X7 that this kidney can even be bigger. LED is standard as for the headlamps optional and with this adaptive LED as we have it here also with a nice LED daytime running light signature in the lower end we see a lot of chrome this one here in the so-called luxury line is supposed to bring a lot of elegance to it there are also other trims available soon talk more about that 5 mm 09 16 foot 7 or 200 inches is the length of the BMW 6 series Gran Turismo and that's very interesting because indeed it is somewhat like a hybrid between the 5 and the 7 series. The front axle is from the 5 series, the rear axle is from the 7 series. By the way, optional there's an adaptive air suspension. Well, we have it here today, but it's not really necessary. The base suspension will all do just fine. I'll also tell you later more about that in the driving part. So this one here is about 15 centimeters longer than a 5 series and about 25 centimeters shorter than a 7 series long wheelbase and actually the same length as a 7 series short wheelbase. So indeed also lengthwise in between and also price wise 10,000 euros or dollars more than the 5 series, 20k less than the 7 series. Yeah that's really interesting isn't it? Rims today with 19 inch here, I think they are quite good compromise overall between 17 and 20 inch. Then in this case here black frames around the windows, you can also get chrome ones. I think to this vehicle chrome frames fit a little bit better. Here also dark um, mirror caps in the same vehicle color. And the special thing is really this side silhouette with, which has this coupe style, this very very flat fast back roof that makes it really special. Also the shoulders stand out a little bit more but overall still a quite subtle design and indeed something between a sedan and an estate. And now look at the rear here. We got the 640i for you today. That's a six and a petrol engine, two more when we take a look under the hood. The GT badge on the other side and quite sensual how the tail limbs are designed right here also in a three-dimensional shape and this is also a typical GT rear. It has this small flat area right here but everything else is really defined by this very flat going down rear window line. In the lower end this one here, well, it is actually a wheel exhaust because the outer tip is directly connected to the inner tip, so it's really one dissolve. And I think that's quite nicely done then. And one interesting feature is also this rear wing. So you need some more downforce in this coupe style cars. You have it automatically when you have a sedan or an estate. But here, this one then is needed for higher speeds and it just flips out automatically. But you know, when you want to show off a little bit, you can also do it manual from the interior as I'm doing here right now. Yeah! Luckily we have hydraulic struts here today and this one is the 640i, 3 liter 6 cylinder, 340 horsepower, all-wheel drive and above, just above 5 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. A smaller 2-liter 4-cylinder as a 630i is also available. We 
with 258 horsepower. This vehicle, of course, fits a little bit better with the three liter six cylinder. Then diesels also two liter four cylinder 620D, 190 horsepower. And then the three liter six cylinder diesels, 630D as with 265 horsepower and the 640D with 320 horsepower. And all have the eight speed automatic converter gearbox. And autonomous emergency brake, by the way, also standard more assistance systems optional as we explain later. So let's say my garage is too narrow for the cars and I can activate this RC parking function. The key needs a um, few seconds to connect to car. Now press park button on the side and keep it pressed for the duration of the entire parking maneuver. This is here a park button then on the side. And then watch for obstacles. Uh, hold it and then engine start. Now activating the remote controlled parking. Oh, now the car is starting. That's scary, right? I've shown that one with the M550i and now I can actually move the car forward. See here, the car is now moving forward. Goodbye car. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait for me, wait for me. But Oh, and now I have to move closer to the vehicle, it also warns me, so you cannot be too far away from the car, so now I have to go closer to the car again, and then I can also move it um, backwards again, I hope. But now it's deactivated again, so you see, it needs some time. Now it's connected again, I hold the parking key once, once more. Watch for obstacles, yes, engine start. That's live testing and auto fuel, no? So, no shiny marketing stuff. So, now it's activated again. And now I slide back on the key and the car should roll backwards, hopefully. There's no one in the car, by the way, so um, I guarantee that to you. Here we go, and hopefully I don't run over our camera. But, you know, that's an interesting function if your parking garage is too narrow or something. Then you can slide in the vehicle with the key. Style car needs frameless doors. Here we go, and that's also counting for the 6 Series GT. Therefore, they have done it in the front and also for the rear door. And interesting is that it is actually somewhat quite helpful when you're in a parking lot, never one getting out, and then you can lower the window, get out more easily, and then later on hit just the closing button on the key and then close the car from the outside again done that quite often also with different coupes and convertibles. The exterior color is called Jatoba. This one is a fitting dark wood inlet to it in a shiny style. Of course this one the rather conservative layout. Then here soft touch sensor tag, leather red at the inside of the doors. That's well done. Also some space for bigger bottles at the inside of the doors. This one here the luxury line. And sadly, they do not offer any alternatives to animal skin at the moment for the 6 Series. Neither in Europe nor in the US. You have to take the BMW individual program and then to ask for either Sensatec or Fabric or Alcantara or something. But the seats itself is nicely done. As for the stitching, for example. Also the lower part here the, can be unlengthened for taller legs. Then a s steering wheel. Rather classic BMW style with some contrast stitches and you also find this wood inlet right here at the left side where you still find also a classic lights control switch. Getting inside you see that the door opens quite wide so it's easy to get in right here. It's rather a classic sedan seating position so you don't sit you know much higher or something. When you turn on the ignition then here we go. Let's see. 
there we go. So then the steering wheel also comes down again. This is also one of the comfort features. And it is also adjustable here in general. Here that comes up again, height and also in reach. Seats also all electric here. You can see it again the function that you can put the lower area a little bit longer. Plenty of headroom. I mean, one meter is 86 or six foot one, and that leaves lots of lots of lots of headroom. And that's different from the 5 Series and the 7 Series because here you can see it from the outside that the roof is a little bit bent upwards. And that just gives you so much more room here in this whole interior. You can also you know, move around quite freely. That's also one thing here of the 6 Series. If you talk about the seating comfort in general and you, th you know, question yourself, should I rather go for an SUV or for you know, 5 Series, 6, 7 Series? X5, X7, there are so many possibilities nowadays from BMW especially and also from the other manufacturers and all somewhat in this high, you know, very expensive premium luxury price range. Then I have to say that the SUV offer this upright seating position and they are therefore more comfortable, at least to me. Interior overview with a soft touch dashboard right there. LED ambient lighting is below that. Then this screen here is somewhat attached. It's also with touch, but also with this classic jog and pressing not so both is actually possible. The menu structure is sometimes a little bit complicated. So a little bit more detail so that. Then you still have a CD changer and some hotkeys. Classic climate unit, so to say, where you can use this knob. And then in this screen, you can control, for example, the vents and also the seat heating and you see digitally what's happening. So quite fancy. In the lower part, you have this cover again. You can slide it open and then have the smartphone connection with the cable, but also with an inductive charging pad below that cup holders. Then you have this shifting lever, automatic shifting lever next to this knob for controlling the infotainment system while driving and also the driving mode select of sport and so on. Electric handbrake and this armrest here you can slide it open and then you have some more space underneath and also another USB supply. Steering wheel is actually quite large. The heated steering function is in the middle part here when you have that optionally. This one here does not have the Hey BMW voice activation yet that came after this model was released. There is some voice input here, but it's not a real natural function, so to say. Left side then for the cruise control, also adaptive cruise control settings. And there are somewhat analog instruments here. It's a mix between analog and, digi analog and digital. Let's take a look at that. And here we go. When we turn on the engine, you can see it comes to life. <laughs> and the outer rings are analog and the inner part is digital. But, you know, it's a quite nice assertment. Why not? Because the digital speed mostly is now watched in the head-up display, an option I would go for. And there it is. On the camera, it's really hard always to pick it up. Speed and the loud speed. And also when you have a GPS route activated, and you also see some commands there. But in reality, from with your own eyes, you can see it very well. And it's also very crisp and a great addition. And here we go with the infotainment screen. Let's check out the GPS map. It's actually quite cr clear and crisp to read. You can see where everything is and also zoom here. There's this pinch and zoom works pretty well. Touch function, for example, to use it while stationary. Vehicle information is always interesting too. When you, for example, look at this technology in action, I have this sport displays. I can also activate it when we drive the vehicle. Other than that, you can also use the lower control, for example, when driving the vehicle. Telephone connection, either we are Bluetooth or we are Apple CarPlay. And that then would be wireless. So you would, it's always you know, a little bit more complicated to install it then. You have to go to manage mobile devices and then go here. You know, activate the Apple CarPlay if it's not activated. And then you have to connect your phone to it. And then it works pretty well. But Android Auto, so far, not for BMW. And the feature I personally appreciate when you use the reverse gear, then also the right side mirror adjust and takes a look down that you don't damage your rims, for example. I really like that feature. And worth mentioning is also the rear view camera because it has a great resolution right there. Also, you can get 
this drone view from above and here when you turn the steering wheel not only do the lines adjust but also the camera tilts a little bit with it and this gives you a great view then. There is a normal car key available however you can also get this big computer car key where you can see if the doors are closed at the moment light information the range for example but it's then pretty big and heavy that's a disadvantage precondition set for example also for the rfc parking so it depends on if you want to spend the additional money and if you want a really big and heavy key in your pocket oh and by the way this vehicle is also equipped with soft close the rear here again with the frameless doors then also nice gt logo here at the inside and you can already see you have a lot of room because this car is also longer than the 5 series also with the electric adjustment of the rear seats available and this car is not equipped with a panoramic roof but what you can see is that again the roof bends leaves a lot of room also for the rear and i really would recommend for this car the panoramic roof because then you have such a great view here to the top part especially from the rear and there's also a four zone climate unit available they can also adjust it then from the rear passenger part and also isofix at the outside of the seats each there and there and also very nice with those separate pillows they are with the microfiber because you touch your head there but that leaves the question why don't they put microfiber on all the seats then well, you can even see here the led ambient lighting a little bit at the instant of the doors for the rear end wow this is a big difference here to the 5 series and indeed you can rather compare this legroom here with the 7 series i have the feeling that if you you know remember the same length for the 7 series short wheelbase and the 6 series here just the 7 series long wheelbase standard one long wheelbase in the us is longer than this one and i have the feeling that this could even be a little bit more than the 7 series short wheelbase very interesting so you can have a lot of room to move around here freely again also although we have a falling roof line a lot of headroom left and it still works with tall adults if you have this panoramic roof option which i can recommend which makes this car so special and since you have a lot of legroom right here and then when you pick the panoramic roof you have so much fun as a rear passenger looking um, to the front there and that made me actually more liking this vehicle as a chauffeur car than the 7 series you know just from the from the whole feeling then again with the nice look and so on overall you can also get those rear entertainment here if you like maybe it's not necessary because everyone is playing with their own smartphone anyway but you at least you have the possibility so also a lot of room and comfortable here in the rear although those animal skin seating surface with the stitching here this makes it quite stiff and stiffer than it actually uh, would need to be so if you go for the base seats this will be a little bit better than and of course very nice if you use those pillows and then can just relax oh, there we go and by the way here you can change the angle of the back seat this would be the more upright position and then you can also put it more to the rear for rather sleeping position where i disappear a little bit and then you can already find a button right here where you flip the seats they directly flip quite quickly so interesting solution so to open this hatch right here this opens quite wide that might be a problem with basement garage and some of those electric hatches they just have the function that you hold this opening closing button for a longer time and then it makes a beeping sound and the next time it stops like in the middle position or whatever when you know when you have like pushed it here or so um, but it doesn't react in a way right here so actually you can set the tailgate height here at doors key and you go to tailgate and then you can pick this preset here this would be the maximum height one two three four different steps but that's it so yeah, i think it's a little bit more complicated to do it here and you also have just those five presets and you cannot check it then from the exterior so the other systems from the other manufacturers where you just manually adjust the tailgate in the rear and then click this button for a longer time definitely easier than this solution here 
Then this cover right here, you can just pull it out like this. Sorry, it was a little bit loud, wasn't it? Um, and then you can access the whole stuff. And whereas the leader figure is 610 to 1800 liters overall when I flip the seats, the measurements here is about 1 meters 10 in length and in width right here it's just about a meter and if you take this wheel arches in the very front together with it then it's even more than 120 it's about 130 but just in this very front area here this rear part here you can flip it up and have some additional storage underneath and you see here it even has a hydraulic gas strut that is of course cool quality here in detail the height right here to the cover is about 40 centimeters. You see the limitation in height is right there in the front when it raises a little bit. But it's still way more practical than the sedan. The Estate, the Touring 5 Series Touring for example, would just be higher in this case here if you need that additional height. And then you can also easily flip the seats from here and also at the other side. There we go. And then you have the full loading capacity that's pretty cool and even in length i mean it's longer than the 5 series so also here this is already two meters to the front driver's seat and even if it would be in my driving position welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the bmw 6 series gt and indeed i told you earlier this one is somewhat a hybrid between the 5 series and the 7 series with the front axle from the 5 series and the rear axle from the 7 series and indeed it also feels somewhat like that since we have the same length in the 7 series but you don't quite feel like in the 7 series indeed you feel that it's something in between so it's a little calmer than the 5 series not that the 5 series would have a worse insulation sound insulation or Soundproof is always good, 5 series, 7 series, and also with this one here, so you're almost driving 100 kilometers, 60 miles an hour, and keeping it quite silent here still, although the tarmac is a little bit rough here too, so that's really well done, you feel very relaxed. But you know, the windscreen is a little bit different, how the chassis is built around me here, I feel a little bit more relaxed than in the 5 series, also, I feel that the, you know, the car is a little bit longer and therefore just running straight is a little bit calmer. But then again, it's not that agile to drive. But you also don't feel, you know, that elaborate as in a 7 Series, so to say. So indeed, it's just from the feeling also something in between. That's, that's very interesting. You know, however, the driving power and consumption and so on won't be such a different, uh, won't be such a different depending on if you go for a 5 series, 7 series, even if you take an X5 or an X7. So it's more about the engine and they're all somewhat equal in weight. Yes, those SUVs have a little bit more wind resistance, but obviously it doesn't make too much of a difference since also for this vehicle here, we have a consumption for this 640i, so a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder with 340 horsepower, consumption between 8 and 9 liters on the 100 kilometers, that's somewhat 26 to 29 mpg US or some 31 to 35 mpg UK. And I think that's still quite okay. I mean, if you consider that we have the same or maybe just a little bit less of consumption or then more mileage for two liter turbo engines in compact vehicles i think that shows again that even if you you know think about the environment that downsizing itself is not the solution it's more about right sizing and also just building a, building good engines and especially the six cylinder engines here by bmw both petrol and diesel they are always performing quite well in our tests. The V8, for example, is, you know, really way higher in the consumption. And if you seek for, you know, more fuel saving alternative, those six cylinder BMW diesels, they are among the most economic engines we could test. That is also, again, pretty astonishing. We 
had that one for example in the 5 series too. So again, a calm driving feeling, we experienced it on the first motorway part there, now some city driving, then again we'll go faster again, also tell you more about assistance systems and so on. But here in the city, you know, you feel still quite okay and cozy. You don't have the best overview to the rear as the window itself, it is long, you know? But it's also quite flat, so you just have like a small hole to look through. Also to the sides, you don't have the best overview. Yes, those windows are frameless, so um, I can actually see the rear window also right there. That's, that's okay, but overall, you know, the design of the car doesn't make it best as for the overview, but it's still quite okay. I also mounted you those sport gauges, you can um, take a look at those when I accelerate um, later, that will be very interesting. The steering is, as we experienced in a lot of the recent BMWs, a little bit loose here in the, you know, very low angle area. And then as you turn, you know, more than a couple of degrees, then it becomes really nice and natural and good feeling. We'll also show you that very soon when we go into a roundabout or something. I think, you know, this dead zone here, maybe it's like a comfort feature that you could just be running straight, especially on US highways or something, but I wouldn't consider it good as for a car reviewer's perspective. But what is clear that they have a great comfortable ride in here and that must, doesn't make too much of a difference if you have the 5 Series, 7 Series or the 6 Series GT. Again, the 6 Series GT here, same length as the 7 Series short wheelbase, the one we get in Europe as standard. You know, in the US you get the 7 Series long wheelbase, which would be an option or a different model than in Europe, but in US the long wheelbase 7 Series is standard. And that one then is even longer than this one. But you don't feel too much of a difference and it's really like those slight nuances you feel when you have been driving a lot of different vehicles. The controls here and everything you do is still quite conservative. I, I mentioned that earlier, but I mean also with those, let's say, part analog, part digital instruments, I'm quite happy because most of the time when I want to check the speed, I'm rather looking at the head-up display right there and that uh, has a crystal clear view, that's pretty cool, like that with the BMWs. The stuff we see here also infotainment wise, as I said also earlier, is not the most more than one BMW has to offer. The reviews here of the, those new 8 series models or the 7 series facelift, we already see this in, um, upgraded function, so this Hey BMW function is not working here yet, if you use the voice button right there. Also as for the recognition, not the most modern system, but you still get along quite well with everything and also when you control the temperature for example while driving you still have this easy knob that you can do it while driving indeed. Blind spot monitor we have in those side mirrors that's pretty helpful. There again the yellow warning triangle appears and when I, sh uh, when I use the turning indicators it's also beginning to flash and it's an additional warning. Here we can also get the cruise control. So let's set it, it's also an adaptive built in here and we also have this semi-autonomous driving assist that it's keeping you in the lane and then also keeping a distance so you're supposed to keep your hands at the steering wheel all the time. The car could theoretically do it on its own but regulations aren't there and of course you always have to be like you know 99% safety is not enough. <laughs> So we have to check um, the, the, the last 1%. But the assistance systems here, they work pretty flawlessly here. I'm not reducing the speed myself. The car is doing it at the moment. Also until zero is working and then also accelerating again. So um, they're working pretty flawlessly. By the way, interesting fact about autonomous, we always say semi-autonomous, which if you take it literary would not exist because autonomous is like a total term like zero or one, so either something is autonomous or it's not autonomous. That would be more semi-automated would be the correct term, because semi-autonomous doesn't really exist. If we really take it literally, 
then again, if we consider what you just say in society and how language lives, I think everyone knows what is meant by semi, semi-autonomous and it's then again maybe a right term to use again because people maybe know more about what it's, what's going on when I denote it as something like this. Oh, what's your take on that? I mean, it's, it's something like with coupé, you know? Uh, Two-door, four-door, some say that, oh, there's no four-door coupé because a coupé is always two-door if you take it literally. Then again, if you say, ah, you know, coupé is, just means cut and that's just a shape, let's be all more open about the definition. I think you can argue this and that. So now about this engine as for the acceleration. So we can speed up. Well, wait a minute, why have they reduced the speed here? Well, like a construction site or something. Oh. Yeah. So we have to wait a little bit longer here, by the way, now, as I was just cruising this eight liters consumption. So I was like at the lower end of the scale for this engine. Was just checking that again. I think so that's the thing you can achieve when just using mainly cruise control and stuff. If you accelerate a little bit further out, then of course, we'll go higher. So let's see how this semi-automated system performs here in the construction side of government. It had to be a little bit more, yeah, so far I did it quite well. But especially when you're in the construction side and those sidelines are all over the place and crisscrossing with the original uh, signs and lines on the road. You have to pay even more attention to those assistance systems and really have to check if they are working properly in your favor. Yeah, so the car is really a great motorway vehicle. It gives, gives you so much confidence and calmness on the road. I really like that. And the funny thing is really that you know, you don't feel too much of a difference then between those big BMWs. Just saved my setting here, so I was taking the seat a little bit more back. It's really, in the rear way, you feel a little bit more difference. So that's, as I said initially, also one of the reasons I got to test this car once more again for myself. So what about some motorway acceleration if I'm going from one uh, from 80 kilometers to 100? I can also go to the sports mode. Now we're now at 75 kilometers, even better, let's go. Well, and that's already it, wow, 108 already. Also interesting that in the head-up display, this number then, so the, the speed jumps to a red as soon as I exceed the speed. So it's like 100 is allowed here and 100 is in, written in white. And as soon as I go to 101, then it's written in red. It's like, a, Thomas, evil Thomas, don't do that. Don't exceed the speed. Well, I think it's pretty helpful, yeah? So now I'm still in the sport mode because that one also stiffens up the suspension a little bit. Let's see here now in this roundabout. I have to left, leave this one past. Now we can accelerate out again. See how far I have to turn the steering wheel. Yeah, it doesn't react that sporty in the corners. This is a long vehicle, long wheelbase. A little bit bulky. Engine is really nicely tuned in. The steering wheel is quite fine, you know, as soon as you leave this like let's say minus three to plus three area. But here you feel that the five series with a little bit shorter dimension is actually more suitable as for an agile driving feeling. This one here somewhat feels heavy. I mean, considering, you know, there, there's still good driving dynamics here. Basically all BMWs have that. But in the, the 5 Series, a little bit more driving fun then, if you compare it on that scale. Here also with a little bit slalom. That is very well done. That feels actually quite good. That's nice. And now the, the brakes. Yeah, you have a good feeling in the brakes. You know where, where the braking point is and can make it also degressive. You know, braking usually should go all, not not progress like not increasing but you should like hammer it and then release it slightly if you see it you don't have to break that fast at least in emergency situations 
Suspension also well done as always as we know from BMW and the thing is really it doesn't matter that much for BMW if you have the air suspension or not because they always manage to do do it very well in at least in the in their bigger cars. Recently had the 8 series also which had the normal adaptive suspension and they were so great in both in sport and comfort. Then we had the 7 series just with the air suspension and it was basically you know a little bit softer yes but also both good in comfort and sports. So no matter which one you go for actually it's always really really cool. And since one, this one here is the adaptive, it also changes a little bit as you like. So if you're in the comfort mode, it stays a little bit more comfortable, softer also when you hit some bumps on the road. If you go for the sports mode, then again, you feel it's a little bit stiffened up. And I'm going to some, you know, some holes on the street and now there's something, you know, like a, like a bad area coming, like let's roll over that, yeah. So then you have a stiffer rebound. So it's quite good for good roads that you have some more sporty fun. If you just want to cruise a little bit more and enjoy the comfort, then you would just stay in the comfort mode. Interesting is also that when you have an air suspension equipped with this vehicle and you drive some higher speeds, it's also automatically lowering the car by about 10 millimeters you know, just to be a little bit more prepared for those higher speeds, also reducing the, the the wind resistance and so on. Definitely also a clever idea, man. So you can adjust the Lenovo just a little bit right there. So indeed, I can conclude it is somewhat a hybrid between the 5 series and the 7 series. On the technology side, yes. Also driving-wise, indeed. Great, comfortable and relaxing drive, also with good figures there from the engine overall power and consumption is also somewhat okay considering the size of the vehicle so it's really hard you know when you are in this segment and they're all somewhat in equal price regions again also the 6 series here between the 5 series and the 7 series as for the price so the question is really what you want from the car and with how many people are you driving? What about this, you know, this is luggage thing? This one here is surely a compromise also between sedan and the state. You know, without changing anything majorly as for the driving aspect. So, what do you think? And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW 6 Series Gran Turismo. Very interesting vehicle, exterior wise from the front, not so different from 5 of 7 Series. Well, now from the 7 Series facelift because it has this huge double kidney. This one here is already quite big. Of course, this coupe shaped side silhouette makes this one here quite special with this fast pack rear. So this is indeed something between a sedan and an estate if you don't want the estate look but still want the rear a little bit more practical, as this car is also longer than the 5 Series, especially more room for the rear compartment if you have passengers there, and especially if you put pick one with the optional panoramic roof. Really cool for the rear passengers to have this great view through the panoramic roof, and to me, was well, somehow an even cooler experience than in the 7 Series, although the 7 Series, of course, also offers this, you know, luxury features here and there and so on. Interior build quality is also really good. The newer BMW is also set, you know, something even on top of that, but this one you're already quite good. They lack some alternative seating materials, especially in this one here. BMW in general does offer it, but not here in the 6 series. And driving wise, very confident, very comfortable as we used to it. And since it has a quite long wheelbase here too, very calm on the motorway, but not that agile for BMW in general, it's a quite long, big and heavy car. You do feel that for sure. Driving wise, this six cylinder petrol engine is you know, good recommendation. Also some decent consumption. Told you the figures earlier in the driving part. So overall, a very interesting vehicle. Not maybe for all European cities, but then again, if you seek something a little bit more practical than a sedan and still want a special look, then it might be something. 
What do you think about this concept? Tell me in the comments.